Well, we woke, we woke up this morning and it's going to be so nice working inside the house instead of outside in this messy snow. It's supposed to be snowy and rainy next couple of days, but uh, hopefully we'll be inside prepping and painting that wheel. <laughs> One thing, at least today, <laughs> this is funny, we won't have to worry if it's going to be a riding day or a no riding day. It's going to be a snow blowing day, so I want to get started on that wheel. Get some of the prep done. Hey, it's a winter wonderland, but boy, so glad I got that wheel pulled off. Well, it was only a day ago. Changes dramatically. Now, we waited for a day like today when it was snowing, crappy out. Definitely not going to ride today, that's for sure. The first thing I wanted to say, if you got a, if you have a a uh, a wheel, a wheel is subject to not only in in my case polishing and waxing constantly, but also the, the chain wax that comes off the dirt, the, the grime. So I know before I even start this, this wheel is dirty. It's dirty at a level most other parts wouldn't be. So I'm gonna do, and let me just say this, and I, I since I'm not uh, you know. I don't read off a teleprompter here. The one thing you never want to do, and it's a, it's a really a never thing, is take a wheel like this before it's been cleaned and take sandpaper. Because the sandpaper grinds the silicone in the oil and grease, wax down into the paint, and then you have a fisheye issue that lasts forever. The best thing, and it's the best thing I've found is start right before you even look at a piece of sandpaper. Get this clean with any combination of cleaners. Simple green just happens to be one good one. In this case, we're going to be spending a lot of hours, maybe several days, cleaning up. See, what I want to do is where the spokes are, this part of the wheel is shiny. I've polished that, but you can't polish the spokes because they're a casting. So just like on the Yamaha wheels, the uh, RD wheels, and some of the other ones, I want to take that casting, sand it, grind it, polish it to where it's smooth, and then put a really nice finish on it. But I found simple green, and I, I'm, I'm not even going to take the tire off, because what I'm going to do is steam clean this wheel, and the steam will heat the tire and make getting a tire off just a little bit easier. Steam has, I've found a lot of things to use the steam cleaner for around the shop. This is just one of them. But if you don't get the wheel clean before you start, boy, it's like trying to build a house and instead of a brick foundation on a silly putty foundation or something. It just makes you crazy. So the first step, if you see, even just a simple, first step of simple green, it cleans a lot of that grip right off. So let's see if it's our lucky day. You never know if it's our lucky day here. The purpose of the steam, two things. It heats grease, dirt, the heat itself. If you had no moisture in it, just the heat would take some of this material off. But the combination of the heat and then the water pressure rinsing it off just makes it a lot nicer. Now, several people have told me, including John, John Poppy, that they bought steam cleaners and they found a lot of good things to use them for in the shop. In John's case, he's restoring a vet. There's always something to use steam cleaning for. Now, the steam also warm up as a side benefit. Not, not that it's a big deal, but the warmer this tire is, once I let the air out, the, the easier it'll just pop off. Anytime you're doing a tire change, heat is your friend. So the combination of the diesel fuel that we use out in the garage, the simple green here, before sandpaper or SOS ever touches this wheel, I want to get as much of this the, the goop off. And next step is just to get the air valve out. Boy, it's so nice working in the house when it's nice and warm like this. 
when my grandson grows up, I can go back to doing pretty much all the work in the house. So when I take that out, I'll be ready to break the beam. What happens with a wide tire, getting this underneath, really not made for tires this wide, can be a little tricky. Now just for reference, one of the little things I did to to keep, well, we're going to be putting other tires into this machine. It's a tire breaker from Har uh, a bead breaker from Harbor Freight. I took a couple layers of old, just ordinary Gorilla Tape to protect the rim, even if you even if you're not going to paint rims. And I can see after doing this one time, yeah, that puts a lot of stress and pressure and whatever. Probably protects the rims from getting a couple little scratches. Just a couple layers of ordinary Gorilla Tape. And of course, if it gets chewed up, just put some more Gorilla Tape on it. And the next thing what I did is an ordinary Gorilla Tape. I want to just keep this middle of the wheel sealed. And it's a simple reason, because we're going to be using a lot of wet sanding water. I don't want all that to get down in there. So I just take a piece of this. Now what I do is, it's a little, I leave a little bit of an edge on here and then wrap it around a perimeter with another strip of tape. Just, uh, I'm sure this is overkill, but I figure anything I don't, the two, the two issues, I don't want, I don't want the grease coming out on here and I don't want the water getting down into the bearing. one of the things when I do when I pull a used tire off and you first time you do this you'll really be impressed go down inside the tire and put your hand on the other side and you can feel how thick right here this tire is probably less than an eighth of an inch thick it's really really thin it's scary and the people that ride these things down below the bars boy that's scary scary stuff now the last thing of course is to take the valve out there's a, there's a rubber washer on these curvy girl. I, I wouldn't say it's a washer. It's like a T washer. And this is really a critical thing that, that this area stay nice and clean and that you don't build up this area here with paint. So I'm going to back mask that off when we actually do the, the painting itself. But for right now, I want to just put this aside. These are from curvy girl. They have worked great for us. I, it's so easy. And I do check the air every time I ride the bike for a I'm just paranoid, I guess. But, you know, it's better to be paranoid than be halfway from home and have eight pounds of air in a tire. Now, just let me explain what I'm, what I'm actually trying to accomplish. This, this part of the wheel that the factory leaves this, this whole area as a casting. For, for, I'm sure, production reasons, this would take, uh, I had $1,000 to the cost of the bike, if they polish this. I also, there's a, there's a rim in here that needs to be polished. So there's a lot of small surfaces. I think most of this is all going to have to be done by hand. It's very, very labor intensive. The, the whole trick to this is I would never do something like this in the middle of the summer because I'd want to go riding. But on a day like today when it's going to be uh, snowing all day, I can take my time even if I do one spoke an hour. I don't care. It's, it's got to be, I call it detail sanding. I got to get this as smooth as possible because ultimately I want the finish to be like this. I don't know if you can even see this finish. This is this is the part I've already, well, it's got simple green on it, but I did polish that. But these casting parts, this is all rough, all rough, 
and I want that to all be, when I'm done with this project, I want that to be, well, as that wheel turns around, like a diamond, showing its facets into the sun. And it's just, this is just a personal thing. Bike's not going to be any faster uh, for, for whatever, but it's just going to be that nice little detail touch. And the, the best detail touch you can ever do to a bike, in my opinion, is something that people don't notice right away. And then they start looking at, for whatever reason, they'll board or whatever, and they look at your bike and go, oh, whoa, that isn't stock. Oh, it didn't come that way. Oh, wow, look at that. And I think that that is the whole, uh, the joy of doing this is to just have that that little detail that you don't see right away but it's there we've already done these wheels on video and i remember sanding in here a million times down in here down in here this is all this is all a casting this was all rough but this is what we're trying to accomplish is to get that whole wheel and what's nice about this you go for a ride you come back you could wipe that wheel down in 10 seconds now i'm just starting off with some 220 this is that sandpaper that comes from Portugal, Rhino wet. And what's going to happen anywhere there's a reverse curve where where this material radius is out, that's where paint when it shrinks is going to tend to pull up out of the valley. So the most important part I'll start with is getting this little edge right along the wheel rim where I've painted the wheel stripe and I painted that wheel stripe twice. In fact, as I'm sanding it, I see the yellow stripe coming up. But getting that anywhere where there's a reverse curve, and if the paint shrinks and it, it'll tend to pull up, obviously we don't want to have that. So the more of this old material we can get off, now, and it's funny, I've watched some YouTube videos that I thought were hilarious. The guy didn't even take the wheel off the bike, just uh, took a can of black and painted the chain and, you know, and said, hey, look at that, custom wheels, wow. Well, you know what? He'll never be featured on Bitchin' Rides, that's for sure. And I'm sure you watch Bitchin' Rides. If you don't, you should. I'm thinking about growing a beard. <laughs> I think Luciano should grow a beard. Anyway, we're going to just work on this. This this just now becomes hour after hour of sanding and more sanding and more sanding. Uh, just to make a point, this is the most critical area. First off, it's the part of the wheel you're going to see right away. And because it has that reverse curve in it, that valley, that's where to paint if it doesn't get a good bond in here. If this is, a, or you know, you could paint right over the old paint. Uh, people do that. But up to a point, I want to get this as smooth as possible. And it's just... You know, I've got every kind of grinding tool and everything. I will try to use that at some point. But at this rim, this this whole edge, when it's done, this is going to be one of the defining parts of this project. So I'm really taking my time and trying to get that as nice as possible and get the all of the or most of the old material out. Now we don't. The next time we go to change tires. We're not going to use the tire irons and we're going to cut the tire off. So this won't take any abuse at all. And then putting the new tire on without tools, we'll just heat it and put it on. And it, it, so this, this where it's normally vulnerable to tire irons, they'll be, we try to keep the paint as thin as possible, keep it as here down into that valley as much as possible. And actually so far, even if, as I'm looking at this rim as one that's done already, it's down in that valley. We don't have any lifting or any peeling down in this valley. So, but it's it's just a labor of love. Now, what I did, I realized, you know, that the 220 paper I was using, let me just get a piece of it out, but the paper was just taking longer than I wanted it to, even though I'm not, I'm not having a race here. Then I remembered another trick that I used on the other wheels. I have this 180 grit industrial paper, and this stuff, it's n this is the funny part, it's not really wet or dry. It's regular sandpaper, but it lasts long enough, and I have enough of it from back in the machine shop days when we used to buy this stuff by the case. This, this has really helped me get this edge, and this is the edge that I'm paranoid about. When, when you see the tire here, and you don't see a nice edge when you try to paint it with the tire still on or something. Yeah, no, a lot of people that wouldn't bother at all. 
Well, but then if you're not going to do it right, why even bother? And I can imagine if you paid somebody to do this work, uh, nobody would want to pay it. It'd just be too much money. You could buy a set of uh, fancy wheels or whatever, custom wheels or whatever. But now I've got, the reason I wanted to show this, I wanted to break on this about once an hour or once every so often, I guess, just to show, is take, just get a look at, I do this like a jigsaw puzzle. I want to do one part at a time, like it's a checkerboard. First part is going to be the, the outer rim. Next part I'll do one section at a time, one section at a time. If you don't do it that way, if you just start doing it randomly, it seems like it seems like it never ends. And for some people, and in fact sometimes for me, it does, never does end. But because what I'm doing here, I'm trying to I'm trying to get the most the most quality I can for the the re, a reasonable amount of time. Now I've got this edge, that, that's ready for primer, and I can feel with my hand if there's any little spots where it's got a nick or a ding, which sometimes these do. I can just sand it out right now. And I remember polishing those FZR wheels. It, was just, it just went on forever. But it's the winter, it's snowing, and the coffee is brewing. I've got a whole bucket of sanding tools that I can use for this kind of an operation. Orbital, drill, by hand. And this is one that's good in this area. These, again, it's Harbor Freight. It's a paint removal tool, and I'm sure that What am I sure of? I don't even know what I'm sure of. Let me do a little spot. Now the truth is I probably could have used it around here, but I just wanted to keep this edge super, super nice because that ring, as you as you look at a wheel, you see it like the way you see a diamond that the sun just goes right around it. Now just to show, and we have a bucket here of these are tools that we probably will use some of, all of. The one I bought for Vince's wheels, soft brushes, hard brushes. There's any combination of things that'll work. Anything to get this down to bare, smooth aluminum. These little guys right at the very end smooth things out. It's just a combination of everything. This, the first thing, it seems like this takes off a nice amount very quickly. Then the rest of it, we're going to have to sand by hand, of course. What really happens is you use a combination of, or I use a combination of, anything I can use that'll get this old finish off, or as much of it as possible. It isn't so much of that, that this finish is going to be a problem, but getting it to stick, if the more of it I can get off, the better, and it'll allow me to get a nice coat of primer on this, and then get a nice coat of the final paint, and again, you know, you, it depends on how fussy you are. I just happen to be blessed with, uh, blessed is not the right word, that I'm very fussy about this stuff. And nobody would ever be mad at you if you like to ride around on a, uh, you know, a bike with dirty wheels, but I, I clean the wheels every time I ride the bike. I just like it. Anyway, what's going to happen eventually I'm going to have to go out there and do some snow blowing. I see we're getting a big storm. But anyway, if you do this in the checkerboard method, I do one section, and what I'll do is rotate the wheel, do another section, do another section. I don't want to chew up where the valve seats. I'll do one section. Every time I can do a section, yeah, I'll take a little break, have a cup of coffee, admire my, uh, my beautiful work, but... A lot of it still has to be done by hand. The reality is you can do so much with the wheel, but that final little smoothness you got to get with hand sanding. In the course of doing this, there's always a, a, a place you can't get your finger or you can't get a tool. These are rubber things that the body shop sells that have all kind of radiuses. And you, uh, of course, put sandpaper around here. We'll be using some of these to get at some of these radiuses. But the most difficult part so far, I've got to get down into this valley. And so what I did, I took on just an ordinary paint stick, 
Take some of that 180 grit sandpaper. And this is going to allow me to get right down into that where my fingers or anything else up here. And in the course of doing this job, we'll probably make several of these tools. Nothing high tech here. You just need to make the tool for places that you really can't get your finger conveniently when you're doing a sand out like this. Yeah, that got right in there. Right in there and put a nice, a nice radius in there so that paint will get a good bond. If I didn't do that, I run the risk that that paint is not going to stick. Now we're only into it a couple of hours. We've got the, the whole section on one side done. Now the next thing is using some of these sanding tools. I don't know if I can get a lot of this off. Some of these have to stay on. I don't know why they put all this writing on here. But anyway, I want to start working the spokes, and I'll do one spoke at a time. Now also, these are hollow spokes, so you can get your finger in there. I'm going to have to clean that up. I want to clean up as much as I can. And again, I won't know until I start working on this what tools, what grinders, or most of the time, it just by hand, it's easier. But I know one thing I will see for sure is this radius here is really a critical thing. If that radius isn't nice, and the most important thing, that whole parameter, that whole circle of the wheel, when you see that in one shot, it just jumps right out at you. Now what I found is this sanding tool, another Harbor Freight Special, was really good at getting these, you see what these, these they have these things here, and I'm sure there it is, suitable for tubeless tires. Who the hell would put a tube in a 190? But anyway, this this seems to be able to get in most of the grooves. You can see I've, I've roughed this out. The rest of this I'm probably going to have to do by hand because you can't really get a tool in there, at least right now. But this, this has certainly been useful for getting that big chunk of material off. I can get that the spokes nice and smooth. Again, I want to see those, spo those spokes like the facets of a diamond as that wheel turns. Now in the end on these spokes, they, I can get a lot of the big stuff off with, with the tools. But in the end, the 180 grit sandpaper... And, and again, this is not wet and dry sandpaper, so I'm surprised it's lasting as long as it is. But it's allowing me to get in all these, this is the critical thing now, is in these radiuses. And again, it, the only word that makes sense here is labor of love. Now, I've, one of the things that I love about this bike, these wheels are super light. I'm amazed relative to the older bikes. Uh, the GS back wheel, you need a, you know, a forklift to pick it up. The RD, probably just as bad. These are really nice modern wheels, and that's why I think no matter what, the the effort I put into this little uh, custom touch, and again, you know, it's like, it's I watch bitchin' rides all the time, and I just keep thinking, some of the things they do just amaze me, and I think, wow, why didn't I think of that? Well. It is, it is very interesting to me how some of the craftsmanship they use, some of the stuff is unbelievable. But anyway, to make a long story short here, if you look, now this one, and I'll show it up close, this one has the writing on it, and it's, it's really, you know, they don't, they don't put any, they, they do the easy part. They chuck this in a big giant lathe, get this nice and smooth, and that's the end of it. All of this hand finishing... It, it'd be like a Ferrari factory if you wanted this hand finishing, but then in essence, for us the time doesn't matter. It's it's just that we want to have something really, really nice at the end of this. Now this is one of the Dremel bits that's really useful just for doing this. Getting in these little areas where it's really difficult to get. Got a toothache? Any, any of these little areas now what's gonna what's gonna happen today we're not going to get this done in one day of course this this is going to be a two or a three day uh, to get this to where we're ready to prime it 
And because we have the snow on the ground and we have the baby coming over, I, I figured what I would do, and it's probably a smart thing to do, is I would get to the middle of this, and I'm about half done, half to go. But the truth is, the second half will go a little faster because I'm, I'm already in a mood to do this. And I'm real happy the way this whole, this whole thing played out just perfectly. But again, I think realistically, this is all we're going to get done. And this is, as you can see, this is dirty work. And you really, what happens if you try to do it all in one shot, I think you compromise the quality. And I don't want to do that either. I want to make sure this is all, I'll, I'll quit when I get half of this done. At the end of this, I'll wet sand it all out with the, the 180 or the 220 and get one side done and I'll feel like yes and and hopefully that's halfway through now through the miracle of video and you really don't see it <laughs> it's like an amazing thing we got the whole other side done in one short session we're ready to do some final detailing on the wheel next time we get to work on it it's pretty much ready for just a final final getting in all the little grooves and edges and angles and it'll be ready for the first coat of prime but it's been a long job this this is a nasty work and but when you're done you really have a good feeling so i hope you enjoyed this part of it and thanks for watching <laughs>